Hello and welcome back to this video tutorial. Today we're going to look at physics homework number 22. All of these examples are Newton's first law of motion. So recall, Newton's first law of motion tells us that when there is an unbalanced force, you're going to get acceleration. When there are no unbalanced forces, uh, you're going to get zero acceleration, okay? And so when you don't have acceleration, you're going to have forces that are balanced in opposite directions, okay? So let's go ahead and begin. What is balanced force is going to look like? It's going to look like forces up equal forces down, or it's going to look like forces left equal forces right. It's going to be one of the two, maybe both. All right, so what we have here is we have a four kilogram mass that is sitting at rest atop of a coil spring as shown right here. How much will the weight be for the four kilogram mass? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out the weight of this thing. Okay, and recall that weight is equal to m times g. So that's pretty easy. So let's go ahead and get our calculator. We have a four kilogram mass. Four kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And four times 9.8 is roughly about 39.2. So about 39.2. Now remember the unit for any force, whether it's weight, friction, tension, normal force, it's always going to be newtons. So 39.2 newtons is the weight. Okay, now on our diagram here, let's remember what we have going on. We did this in pH number 21. We did this exact same one, in fact. We have the weight going down, which you just found, and you've got the spring force pushing up. Spring force equals K times X. Okay, so for part B, how much spring force will be exerted upward by the mass on this spring? Okay, on the, on the mass by the spring. So what we have is we have Newton's first law, okay, is going to be a part of all this. Why? Because if your mass is at rest, then there is no acceleration. So when there's no acceleration, forces are balanced. Forces going up equal forces going down. Okay, what that means is the spring force going up is going to balance the weight, which was... Thirty nine point two newtons. Number three, a crate which has a mass of fifty five kilograms is being lifted straight up by a rope at a constant speed. What will be the tension in that rope? Okay, well, let's, let's draw an image of what's going on here. So I've got an object, which I'm just going to make as a, a box, just for simplicity. Okay, I'm lifting up with it a rope, which means I would have tension going up the rope. Now, since I'm moving it and lifting it at a constant speed... Right, so constant velocity upwards means no acceleration. So at rest means no acceleration, constant velocity means no acceleration. That means is this force here has to balance the weight going down. And so the weight going down
directed like this. So those two forces here and here should be equal length and balance. And since they are balanced, what this tells us, again, Newton's first law is applied here when objects are not accelerating, which means forces going up equal forces going down. And in this case, tension equals the weight, which equals mg. <laughs> Let's go ahead and throw that into our calculation here. And we are going to go 55 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, and when we go 55 times 9.8, we get about 539 newtons. Oops, sorry about that. Sorry, just reorganizing this real quick. Okay, there we are. About 539 newtons. Number four. A crate which has a mass of 55 kilograms is being pushed along a horizontal surface. It's a bit of a typo there, extra word. Um, by a force of 85 newtons so that the crate is moving to the left at a constant speed. So what that means to us, we're moving this at a constant velocity to the left, which means no acceleration, right? No acceleration means that we get to apply Newton's, um, so there's no acceleration here. We get to apply Newton's first law. Uh, so let's talk about the forces. This is part A, complete a free body diagram showing all the forces acting on the crate. Okay, so I'm going to start with our weight. And we have our weight equals m times g. Our normal force should be the same length, should be balanced, going up. Those two forces should be drawn equal length. Okay, now I've got friction going opposite the push, shorter this friction force, which is equal to mu times normal force, that needs to be shorter than my normal force. Friction is always less than normal force. Okay, and then finally, my applied force, my force applied should balance my friction. Those should be equal as well. So there's my force applied, which is my 85 newtons right there. Okay, so there's my force diagram for part A. Now let's get into the problem solving. Part B, what is the magnitude of the normal force? That means how much is the floor pushing on the object? Well, again, you don't have any... Um, this was part A, mind you. This is part B. Uh, you don't have any acceleration in both the X or Y direction. So Newton's first law applies to this whole question. That means in the, in the vertical direction, force, force up balances force down force up equals force down, what that means is normal force going up is going to balance the weight, which is mg going down. We're going to plug into that. Okay, the mass would be 55 kilograms times 55 times 9.8. We worked it out in the previous example. You might remember we got 539 newtons. Okay. Now for part B, uh, we get normal force balancing weight. For part C, we're looking for the magnitude of the gravitational force on the crate. Well, the gravitational force, that's the same as the weight. We already got that. Part D, how much frictional force 
will be acting along as this is pulled at a constant speed, while friction going to the right balances force applied to the left. So again, Newton's first law applies here, and forces going to the left balance forces going to the right. So forces going to the left would be force applied equals friction going to the left, which means friction would equal force applied, which is the 85 Newtons. Okay, number five. A crate which has a mass of m equals 45 kilograms is being pulled up a frictionless incline, which meets the horizontal at an angle of 35 degrees relative to the horizontal. By a rope, uh, as shown to, uh, to the right. First, part A, complete a free body diagram showing all the forces acting on the crate as it moves up the incline at a constant speed. Part B, what will the magnitude of the normal force acting on the crate be? Part C, what will the magnitude of the tension in the rope be? All right, so let's zoom in, part A. Okay, let's take a look at the... Um, I'll put that over here. Let's take a look at the uh, free body diagram. Okay, so first, let's start with the weight. The weight is always acting straight down. Okay, and weight equals mass times g. Okay, we have normal force that goes perpendicular to the incline, like this. Okay, should be a perpendicular angle right there. There's our normal force. Uh, you have the rope itself, so there's tension going up the rope like that. And that's it. Now, if there was a rough incline, then you would put friction going down the incline like this. But since there's no friction, uh, we don't include that. Now, the only thing we're going to do is we're going to essentially find the components for the weight, right? And here's, remember, here's why we do this. We're trying to take our normal horizontal and vertical directions, and we are trying to shift them. Oops. Sorry, let me try that again. Okay, we're trying to take our normal horizontal and vertical directions and we're trying to shift them from this to this, okay? And if you see, normal force is now in the vertical direction. Tension is now in the horizontal direction, okay? And weight is no longer in any direction, it's at an angle, okay? Uh, or it's no longer in a specific direction, like up, down, right, or left, it's at an angle. So what we gotta do is we now need to find components of the weight that would go perpendicular to the plane, that goes perpendicular to the plane, and then the gray component here is going parallel to the plane, all right? So if we look at our highlight here, this is perpendicular to the plane, that component's perpendicular to our plane here, and then our gray component is parallel to our plane here. So we have a perpendicular and, and parallel component. Okay. Now, the, per the perpendicular component is adjacent to our theta. So our alpha, our angle of incline, is the same as this angle right here. And so the blue component, the adjacent, is the adjacent component, uh, which goes with the cosine of the angle. Okay. Now it's the cosine of mg, so we're going to write mg times the cosine of the angle. Okay. And then on the bottom... That's the opposite side. Opposite goes with sine, so this would be mg times the sine of the angle, the angle being 35 degrees. Okay, so that's pretty much what we need here. All right, so now part B, we need to be able to find the magnitude of the normal force. Now notice the normal force is a vertical force. 
Well, remember, this is a Newton's first law concept. Why? Because the crate is moving at constant velocity. It's not accelerating. There's no acceleration, acceleration, there's no acceleration vertically, okay? What that means is the box is not bouncing up and down off the, the plane here. It's just simply gliding up the plane and it's gliding up the plane at a constant speed. So it's not accelerating in either direction. So this is a Newton's first law concept, which tells us forces going up equal forces going down. Okay, now what would be up? What would be up? Well, up would be this direction right here. Remember, that's now vertically upward. So normal force is the up. And what would be down? Well, what force is opposite normal force? It's the component of weight, mg times the cosine of the angle of incline. Okay, so we're going 45 times 9.8 times the cosine of 35 degrees. Okay, so we're gonna go cosine of 35 degrees times 9.8 times 45, and it looks like we're getting about 361. So about 361 Newtons. Sorry, just reorganizing our answer box. Okay, and so now for part, for part C, we're looking for the tension going up the rope. Well, remember, we're going constant speed upwards. So again, there's no acceleration up the plane. Which means again, Newton's first law, which means again, Forces are balanced, but this time it's forces left equal forces to the right, okay? Now, what are your forces going to the right? Well, that would be tension. So tension is gonna equal the forces going left. Well, the only force going left is the component of weight that goes downhill, mg sine of the angle. So we're gonna plug into that. We take the sine of 35 degrees times 9.8 times 45. And we should get about 253 newtons. Number six, a five kilogram mass is sitting at rest on a horizontal surface. A horizontal force of eight newtons is applied to this mass to cause the mass to slide at a constant speed. Part A, what is the weight of this mass? Part B, how much upward force is exerted by the surface of the table? And C, what is the magnitude of the frictional force between the mass and the surface of the table? So let's get a, a force diagram on this. Uh, I'm not gonna draw on this right here. I'm just gonna draw a, a separate one. So here's our mass, our block. It's being pushed to the left, so we have a force applied. We have a force applied going to the left. F sub A is force applied, the applied force. We have the weight going down. Gravity is going down. Weight equals m times g. We have the normal force going up, and the normal force should be balancing the weight. Those should be equal, right? And then finally, since you're moving this box 
at a, along the surface at a constant speed, that tells you that the force applied should balance the friction that's going the other way. And we draw friction as a force that is coming from the point of contact of the surface and the object opposite the direction of motion. So. like that. And the equation for friction, if you recall, is F equals mu times normal force, or friction is fun. Kind of looks like the word fun, doesn't it? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with part A. Okay, what is the weight of this? We're plugging into M times G. Okay, our mass in this case is a 5 kilogram mass times 9.8. Okay, take a moment, plug that in your calculator. Okay, if you did it right, you should have gotten about a 49 newton mass, a 49 newton weight, excuse me. Okay, now part B, part B is asking what is the upward force exerted by the surface? We're looking for the normal force here. We have to be able to interpret by a description which force we're being referred to. Well, remember guys, the normal force balances the weight. So that means if the normal force balances the weight, we already have the weight. It's 49 newtons. So we were able to answer that with a concept rather than a calculation. Okay, and then finally, part C says, what's the magnitude of the frictional force? Well, by the same idea, the frictional force balances the applied force of eight newtons. So again, Newton's first law is applied horizontally as well as vertically. Okay, and what that means is force is left equal forces to the right. Just like this was forces going up equal forces going down. Okay, so what are our forces going to the left? Well, that would be force applied. Forces going right would be friction. We know the force applied is eight newtons, so friction equals the value of the force applied, which is eight newtons. Number seven, a meter stick is supported from a ring uh, stand as shown uh, to the side where the angle between the meter stick and the supporting string is 24 degrees. So we're talking about this angle right here. Okay, and the tension in the string right here is 18 newtons. The left end of the meter stick is pivoted right here. So how much force horizontal FH would be required to pull the meter stick away from the ring stand, meaning how much force do we need to apply this way? How much force vertical would we need to lift up the meter, strick, meter stick if the string were removed? So if we were to take away this string, how much vertical force would we need to lift that way? Okay. Now, here's how we can kind of reason this out. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this diagram here. Okay, let's talk about the force diagram that's acting on this right here. And there's actually a couple of forces that are going on. Okay, number one, you have the forces acting on the mass itself, which would be weight equals mg, and you have this tension going up the rope, right? Then you've got this uh, meter stick itself, and you have forces applied at the end of the meter stick, okay? You have the tension that's pulling down on it this way, and you have this tension going up the string like this, okay, at an angle. Now, we're gonna, what we're gonna do here, now, we weren't really told if the meter stick has weight too, but 
if the meter stick had weight, we would concentrate the weight from the center of the meter stick, but that's not really essential to this particular problem. All right, now we need vertical and horizontal component of forces. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get um, components for that tension. I'm gonna have a vertical component that goes up and a horizontal component that goes over. And this angle here would be the exact same angle up here. Now that makes the blue component the opposite side. The opposite side of, of vector T, the tension vector, which would make this T times the sine of alpha. Okay, this would be my force vertical right here. Okay, now um, the gray one is the adjacent side of alpha. That would be tension times the uh, cosine. Of alpha. Okay, so we have that. Now these two tensions point at each other, so basically what we can kind of visualize here is the fact that this weight that goes down balances this component of tension going up. That's going to be our solution to part B, force vertical. And force horizontal to pull it away from the stick, well that would have to balance this tension that pulls it toward the stick. So let's go ahead and break down what we're supposed to do with this question. Part A, force horizontal. Again, we're talking about forces left equal forces to the right. Okay, now forces going to the left would be tension times the cosine of alpha, and that would equal forces going to the right, which would be our force horizontal that we're pulling the stick away. So force horizontal is equal to our 18 times the cosine of 24 degrees. Let's plug that in our calculator. Twenty-four cosine times eighteen. Should roughly be getting about sixteen point four newtons. Okay, now part B, similarly. We're looking at forces up this time equal forces down, okay? Forces going up would be tension times the sine of alpha. Forces going down would be, I mean, technically it'd be the tension here, but the tension here would be the same as the weight that's pulling on it. So equals uh, the weight or mg, <laughs> okay? Um, and that would be the, the, the tension sine theta, that would be the same as your, your force vertical. Because you remember the whole question was under the premise that you remove the, the, the string, so then there's no more tension anymore. So really force vertical balances the weight, which would be, uh, what was the mass again? Oh, okay, so since we don't know what the mass is, uh, we can do this indirectly. Uh, instead of setting it equal to the weight, we know that force vertical will be the same as whatever T sine alpha was supposed to be if the string was still there. So 18 sine, uh, 24 degrees will be our solution there. Uh, which is roughly about 7.32 newtons. Number eight, a child who has a mass of 24 kilograms is sitting on a swing as shown to the right. You pull the child back with a horizontal force F until the angle between the ropes, uh, the ropes of the swing and the vertical is 32 degrees. We're talking about this angle right here, the vertical and the ropes. Complete the free body diagram to the right showing all the forces acting on the child. Okay, so we'll call that part A over here. Let's take a look at that. So, first of all, the force that's mainly acting on the child would be gravity. So let's get the weight going straight down like this. 
Okay, and weight equals mg. We also have tension going up the swings. Now, I know there's two different uh, ropes there, but I'm just going to kind of focus it on as one tension, just one tension going up. That accounts for both ropes. So that's going to be tension in the ropes. Uh, and, and, that's, and then finally, the reason why the child is at an angle in the first place is because there's a horizontal force that is directed, I'm going to call it force applied. Or you can call it F sub H, force horizontal. You could do it that way too. Uh, but that's also acting on the child as well. So the only thing we need to do is we need to get the components of the tension, which are at an angle. So let's get those components. We are going to go up, 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 stop. Then you're going to go over, 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 stop. And the way you should have drawn this is you should have had this component balancing your weight. Okay, and then finally you should have this component balancing the horizontal force. So that should be our components, our um, free body diagram for this. Now let's get the actual components for tension. This angle alpha is the same as this angle alpha here. And this is the adjacent side of alpha. Since adjacent goes with cosine, that would be T cosine alpha. <laughs> Since the gray component up here is the opposite side of alpha, that would make that T sine of alpha. Sine goes with opposite. Cosine goes with adjacent. Okay, so now that we're done with that, part B is asking what's the tension in the ropes of the swing? Well, a couple ways we can go about doing that. Um, one, let's first go ahead and take a look at the vertical forces because I, I can figure out the weight of that child. The mass is 24 kilograms. So the weight of the child is just going to be mass times G. Okay. So I am going to use for part B, okay, my vertical forces. I'm going to apply Newton's first law because there is no acceleration going up or down. That tells me those two, for those two forces, the vertical, are balanced. Forces going up equal forces going down. Now forces up would be T cosine alpha. It's that blue component right there. And that's going to be equal to the downward weight, which is mg. Okay, now you're solving the equation for tension. So go ahead and divide away the cosine of the angle, and you'll have tension by itself. Cancels. And T is equal to mg over cosine of the angle. Let's plug into that. Okay, 32 degrees it was, and let's see, and the mass was 24 kilograms times 9.8. Okay, so we're good there. Okay, now we are going to go... Uh, so 24 times 9.8. So 24 times 9.8 is about 200 and... So, okay. There we go. It's about 235.2. And on the bottom, the cosine of 32 the cosine of 32 is about 0 0.84. 
8. So now divide those two and we'll get the tangent. Okay, so we're going to go 235.2 divided by 0.848, and we get about 277 newtons, like that. Okay, now for part C, we're looking for the horizontal force. Now remember, the horizontal force, guys, balances the T sine. So now we're going to be looking horizontal force left equals force right where force left is your force applied, your horizontal force, and that's going to be equal to T sine of alpha, which would be two hundred and seventy seven times the sine of thirty two degrees. So we'll go thirty two, take the sine of it, times two hundred and seventy seven. And if we do that right, go ahead and plug that in your calculator. should be getting about 147 newtons. Okay. I hope you found this video tutorial to be helpful. Thank you. See you next time.